so this is on the way to Bodie. And it's a pretty crazy, desolate country here. Those of the series you see way, way, way across there. Begin the tour where? Uh, over here to the left of that shit. Wow, look at this. Look at that braiding. That's a wild looking cable right there. My dad would love to see this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is like an all-day event. Yeah, this is big. Look at all the people. Look at the size of this town. I mean, it is. It's, it's way bigger. All those people coming in. So this is the first building we came to on our left as we came down off the parking lot. And you can see it's all kind of boarded up. There's, this is These windows are actually still here. And it's the original windows, dude. You look, you can see. Yeah. There's an original bed right there. Is it? Huh? Is it? Check out the electric coming in. Yeah, there's a bed like this. This is back in the days when they started a lot of fires <laughs> with the electric. As you can see, those wires don't have any insulation on them, hardly at all. Wow, this is the Dolan house. What was it done, used for? Just living? Um, McDonald's. Oh, so this is their kitchen, I take it. Yeah. You can get a good view with the 
better view with this than you can your eyes. People actually live in there? Employee resident. He's coming. Wow, this is nuts. Right, look at that little gnome on the ground. This is bizarre. meeting at the table. nuts right yeah James S. Kane arrived at Nbodi at age 25 in 1879 he had married Martha Delilah Wells of Genoa Nevada Kane entered the lumber business and put barges on a steamship on Mono Lake to transport wood this shit out. This is building number 47. Yeah, it looks like we're supposed to go down that way if we wanted to go in chronological order. Okay, let's go down that way then. I just fell on that ass. Sawmill, saw... Man, my dad would love to see this. I know, I'm kind of surprised that we didn't come here and we took them to Kentucky instead. Kentucky? Sawmill with a snow as high as 20 feet deep with winds up to 100 miles an hour and temperatures down to 30 to 40 below. Plenty of firewood was needed to keep Bodie's poorly constructed house warm during the winter. The winter 78 to 79 was especially severe and some new arrivals were not adequately prepared. Many died of exposure or disease. Standing on the main street, that's the morgue. You can see there's quite a few people here. The building, the town is like way, way bigger than I thought it was going to be. I mean, it's very, very impressive. This is uh, one of the two mortuaries remaining in Bodie. The other one is near the cemetery. The building with caskets still inside may have been moved here in Bodie later years, probably after 1888 when the fire destroyed the Bodie House Hotel at this corner. Oh, so there used to be a hotel between here and the street corner. Really? There was a hotel right here, huh? I think right here. Yeah. So yeah, if you look in this window and then... So the below, I guess there was a... Hello, little cave coffin. There's a hotel right here, but it's gone now. Oh, wow.
Oh, this is an impressive building here. It's impressive. This is the hotel. Yeah. Ooh, there's a murder site right here. Really? Ooh, a murder site. Got inside here. Oh yeah. I love it. You can just put the GoPro up and move the hat to the window, man, and you can instantly see right inside. Like a window in a window. Let's see, window in a window. There we go. See right in there. Yeah, it's got a bar in it and everything. So, the one in here was a murder? Oh, really? The site of Thomas Trailer's murders in the early hours of June, January 14, 1881, minor Thomas Trailer was shot and killed in the corner. It's 35 cents. Wow. Thirty-five cents for liver and onions. What a deal! Too bad liver and onions is puke. Jesus, it's right, just like Eli, Eli Joel in Nevada. Lottie married Eli in Nevada before moving to Bodie in 1883. The couple's successful mining investments allowed them to purchase houses and several saloons. Lottie took up painting in Bodie. One of her paintings hang in the Miners Union Hall Museum from 1932 to 1942. The post office was located here. Dude, look, there's clothes hanging up on the wall right there. They're actual clothes. Interesting. And then a painting of George Washington. Yeah. Yep, can't see in this one. Next. A little more in there. Barber shop. Oh, bar slash barber shop. Oh, this was a barber shop? Oh yeah. Oh, they even got the old stretchy pole. Alright. And 17 is the firehouse next. There's the striped pole. Lighting is just perfect. Check out the lighting in the back of this. The firehouse was rebuilt in 1930 by the CCC Volunteer Firefighting Company. Battle a number of fires over the years. Bodie's biggest fires were July 25th, 1918. And inside now dates from the 1930s. This is the hydroelectric building. Don't you have to have water for hydroelectric? That's the word hydro. Where did the water come? Oh, this is inside the hydroelectric plant. The school after this first school was allegedly burned down by an early day of juvenile delinquent. In 1879 to 1880, school saw a high enrollment of 615 students. It closed wow. in 1942. Wow, 1940. Look at the texture on this wood, how old it is, and how it's just been chewed up. <laughs> Tea garden drip. Old light bulbs. 
like that old stick. So, okay, well I'm gonna look in the window and see what's inside. Oh, there's a fireplace and a chair. There's a nice stove in here on the other window. Oh, in the other window? Yeah, there's, you can see a nice stove here. Oh man, check it out. This one has a couch with a blanket or a rug on it. You can see this, they got a really fancy stove in there. Too bad you can't see it later. What do you think? Pretty neat. Yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> Whose house is this? The Falx. They're buried in the graveyard up there. Mm -hmm. there. Make it. Dude, wagons between Bodie and Carson City. John also worked as a blacksmith. The hops growing on the porch railing were said to be the only grain plants that could survive in Bodie. Huh. Interesting. For his wrestling talents, and his wife Mary. Have four children. So yeah, we could go up here and then tell this to go. Wow, that looks like an elegant bay window. It is. <laughs> it's been pretty, pretty emptied out though. I mean, for 1880, I would assume this is pretty elegant. He was dared and had to do it. A little information about the 35 native Paiutes is given on the 1880 census. Only one was listed with the name Captain Bob. Then sudden growth of Bodhi impacted the hunter-gatherer lifestyle of the native population. Some of the native people adopted by working in Bodhi and other towns and ranches. Their small huts were found on the ridge above town. They also worked at Hank Blanchard's Lime Kiln in Mono Basin, and many pipe women worked as household help. Dude, I have to tell you, man, the dynamic range on these things is pretty remarkable. Because I've got you, which are you're in dark shade. I can see you fine, and I can see everything in that bright sunshine side too, just fine. I'm really, really happy. Founded by E.L. E. Benedict in 1890, despite Bodie's wild west reputation, his bank was never robbed in 1990 on September 1st. 
1916, however, yielded $2,000 in cash, some bullion, and other valuables. Oh, okay. This is the drill. I could kind of guess by the bars. Oh, no, the blacksmith. Just like the day they left it. Wow. Shot. And then above that, the town jail looks small in proportion to the tales of flawless during Cody's boom years from 1878 to 1881. The jail was the responsibility of Constable John Kurgan. An infamous 1881 incident which resulted in Kurgan's temporary demotion and the vigilantes took a accused murderer Joseph DeRoche from the jail and hung him. Nice. A lot of people getting hung out here, huh? Worked here in the row of mostly one room cabins called Cribs from Bonanza Street. You can see the crumbling buildings with a brick foundation to the north. This is the Mastietti Liquor Warehouse. It was named for Anatomist Miss Lady, a native of Switzerland who owned a saloon, a bakery, and Dodi had briefly served as a constable in 1880. Only two buildings and some ruins remain of what was a large Chinatown wood frame building, some built over stone cellars lined King Street, the Chinese quartered hopper. Presents a full range of services, including general stores, laundries, gambling halls, saloons, boarding houses, a Toa's temple, opium dens, were frequented by Caucasian Chinese alike. Chinese people were discriminated against and were not allowed to join the miners union, which kept them from high paying jobs. Their main source of income came from selling vegetables, operating laundries, and cutting and selling firewood. Cool. So this was the gentleman's house who owned the stables here in town. Let's see what he left behind. Some stuff. We'll try another window. Huh. There's gotta be at least a hundred buildings here, right? Huh? I mean, there's gotta be at least a hundred buildings. This is a machine shop. Bobby Bell, son of Lester L. Bell, was born in Bowie in 1914 and worked in the, in the mines in the state mill. He helped stabilize Bowie's buildings. In the 1960s and 70s, he also contributed his knowledge of the town in the early years of the new state park. He died in 2003 and is buried in the Bodie Cemetery. I want to go look at a cemetery now. Check this out. Look how you can't see nothing in here, right? Can't really see. Now watch when I put the camera in there. Yeah, sir. I know that earlier. That was super cool.
explain why that building was blown up. Oh yeah? flagpole on top. Yeah, it sounds like those things were like expanding or burning up. Like... I want to try to get to this high point. Got the fancy bay window. Yeah, we're gonna do that up there. Oh yeah. Let's go through the cemetery. We have to walk and over the there, other mortuary. Let's get a beverage and we'll walk over there. Yeah, light it, paint it up a light. Yeah, I do a little bit of light paint once in a while.
Look at that tree, it's beautiful as hell.